This is Three Questions with Debbie Tannebaum. All right, Debbie, I was practicing your name. Did I, did I get it right? Tannebaum. It's it. Yeah. Tannebaum. Okay, I got it. So Debbie, De Debbie, uh, <laughs> okay. De say it again. I, I want to say it right. Tannebaum. Tannebaum. Yeah, there you go. Maybe I'm hearing in Canadian. I don't know. Maybe that's, I feel like I'm saying it. I'm, okay, hopefully I, I kind of bounce. So Debbie yeah. uh, it actually has, um, has actually written a book, and we're going to talk about it in a longer podcast, but it's called Transform Techie Notes to Make Learning Sticky. I love that name. And I, I love the Thank idea you. of like sticky ideas. So um, we're going to talk about that soon. But before we get into that, uh, Debbie is from Virginia, and uh, I, I, I know just having a little brief conversation with you before the podcast, I know um, you and I have a, a pretty uh, similar vision of how we see learning and, you know, really trying to make opportunities open up, not only for our kids, but our staff too, and kind of seeing the possibilities and, you know, really working side by side with our colleagues. And uh, I really appreciate that about what you're sharing and, and just what we were talking about. And when you look back at your career, when you look back at education, uh, who's a teacher that you think maybe inspired you, maybe as a student, maybe as a colleague, and, and what did they do to inspire you? Well, I was what I was telling you earlier is I actually did a blog post about this when you first started doing this. Um, and so I wrote about two people there. I actually wrote about my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Hill, who when I found out I was going to have him, I cried. Um, he was my second grade gym teacher, and I was scared to death of him. And turns out he was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. He got me from just being an okay student to really pushing myself and really trying harder and really, you know, made me into an excellent student. And so he was the first one who came to mind. And then the second one is my um, French teacher from high school, uh, Madame Gable. And I was a really shy kid growing up mm -hmm. and I didn't like to talk in class. And I went up to her and I was like, why am I not doing well in your class? And she's like, because you're not talking. And she really helped me to get over being shy and to take more risks. And I ended up going to college to be an elementary school French teacher in a lot of ways because of her. Wow. Didn't end up being an elementary school French teacher, right. but that was the original plan. But she, they were both awesome educators who I have to be honest, really pushed me out of my comfort zone and I was better for it. And, and, that's, and, that, I, and I love that because sometimes I think uh, we can easily like validate the teacher that just kind of let us be as we are when we come in there. And I've really been thinking about this a lot. The idea of like, do we, do we actually put people in a position where they leave better after us, where um, they, they don't need us after the fact. Right. Cause I think sometimes mm -hmm. uh, it's easy that we can create a dependence. And I think I, I see that sometimes in adults too, right. Where you're watching the same person over and over again and just saying like, Hey, it's okay. It's just okay to do that. And I understand that just having empathy but also, like, do, do we surround ourselves with people that actually make us better? And that's that's really awesome uh, to hear that from both your teachers. I actually, it's funny that you said Mr. Hill because I was uh, one of my favorite teachers ever. His name was Mr. Hill, and uh, he was my <laughs> he was my grade A teacher. And I remember this actually very vividly. He, uh, him, and I, I this is like made this connection, right? Uh, I love basketball. Everyone knows this about me. That was in the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, he loved basketball. He was a big Seattle SuperSonics fan which doesn't even exist anymore. And I was a big Lakers fan and uh, we had a bet on who would win a basketball series and uh, whoever lost had to win the, like I, I, if he, if I, if the Lakers won, he had to wear a Lakers shirt that I picked. <laughs> and if I, if I lost, I'd have to wear a Sonic shirt. Well, we, the Lakers won because they always win. And uh, except for <laughs> this year. And it was like a super hot day. I'm doing, you know, Celsius. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. I'm guessing it's like 110. It's probably about 35 degrees Celsius. And I gave him this gigantic, like, wool Laker sweater. So not only did he wear this, he was like dying of heat. <laughs> and it's just something I remember all the time, right? And it's just like those little moments that you have. And uh, I actually still connect with him to this day. And, he, you know, he was there when my father passed away. He's, you know, really a pillar in the community. So... Uh, I love hearing that. So like shout out to those teachers and, you know, and the Mr. Hills of our lives. So, <laughs> all right. Okay. So, you know, uh, administrators, right. And I know uh, the same thing that you said about your teachers. I, I always dream to work and like the best administrators I've ever had did the same thing that your teachers did. 
uh, for you. They pushed me to become better. They were people that I know um, challenged me, but also always had my back. And I think that's something that is really important because I think sometimes we can challenge people, but if we don't know they have our back and we're like a little bit reluctant. So when you think of your career and, uh, you know, maybe as a kid, maybe as a, an adult, who's an administrator that's, that sticks out to you and why? So the person who really sticks out to me is my principal when I first joined the county that I'm in right now. Um, and her name is Jen Hertzberg. And she was the one who introduced me to Twitter. Um, I'm, I got my master's in technology back in 2002. And I had always done stuff with technology, but I, I thought Twitter was mm -hmm. just for celebrities. And to be honest, when she first told us that we were going to, you know, have, you know, a hashtag and this right. and that, I kind of thought it was a little crazy. Right. But she got us on Twitter and our school on Twitter. We started following each other. And I started realizing it was something much more than that. And even more than just Twitter, she like was very active and in, in really that lifelong learner that we both, you know, really emphasize. She was on Saturday morning hmm. chats doing this and doing that. And because of that, she really helped me grow. And so when I came up, I was a fifth grade teacher for her. When I came up to her and said, I thought I wanted to be a technology specialist, she goes, I, she, she kind of gave me a look like I know this day was going to come. Um, but she did everything in her power, even though she was knowing that she was losing a teacher because she knew that's what I was hmm. really meant to be. And, you know, she helped me with cover letters and resumes. And she was just such an amazing support, even though she knew it was, you know, to her, I guess, her own detriment right. in a lot of ways. Um and just such a phenomenal person. And I was funny because when I, you know, told her I was writing the book and I said, you know, I said, is it okay if I mention you? And then she's like, of course, right. you know, and it's just, it's been a really wonderful relationship. And I'm really glad that she was the, that that's where I ended up when I joined my county, because without her, my life would be a hundred percent different. It's interesting the the congruency between the stories, right? You had teachers who pushed you, you maybe things that you weren't comfortable with. And then you have an administrator yeah. who does the same thing. And then you basically share how you come out better because of that. Uh, I want to ask you this question. And I, I, I just kind of thought about this. Uh, I, I, I was like a really big advocate of Twitter. Like, you know, people should be using Twitter. Uh, I don't know if I'm as much of an advocate. And it's not because I don't think Twitter can be extremely useful. But I just think there's so many different spaces too, right? Like you can go on Instagram. You can go on Vox. Mm -hmm. And I think that... For me, what was revolutionary was not Twitter, but how educators started using Twitter. And then that same practice yeah. then actually went into other spaces, where whether, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram. And uh, this weekend, I, I got a really nice email from someone who just said how much they appreciate me. And they said, hey, I would love for you, you should try Clubhouse. It's awesome. And yeah, yeah and, awesome. So, and, and, I, <laughs> and to be honest with you, I'm sure it is. And I just said, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. And it's not that I'm not open to learning, but I was just like, how many spaces do can I be in? And yeah. I got to kind of pick and choose. And it's not that I don't think it's awesome. Yeah. And I think that we, like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not asking you about Clubhouse specifically, but uh, I think my philosophy has shifted is like, you don't need to be on Twitter. You don't need to be in Clubhouse. You don't need to be, just be in a space where you connect with educators outside of your own yeah. schools. And I just wonder what you think of that, because I think that can lead to like, like if I'm on Clubhouse, then I got to pay attention to Twitter, got to pay attention to Instagram. I just, I think, I feel that would lead to more stress and maybe not better teaching learning. I don't know. I don't know what you thought. Yeah. And I, and I agree with that. I'll be honest. I, I've had two journeys on Twitter. I was first Mrs. Tannenbaum and then I got oh. hacked last year and I recreated myself as Tannenbaum Tech, which actually was one of the yeah. best things that's ever happened to me because I had an awful <laughs> handle. Um, and I really, it's really helped me to kind of expand yeah. and grow, but I'm on several different things, but if I have to pick one place where I'm mostly right. on, it's Twitter. And then I guess Facebook would be next. Um, sometimes I'll post things on Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, to me, Clubhouse, there's one particular thing I like to do on Clubhouse, but every once in a while mm. I'll pop in, but you're right. It get, does get to be too much, but to me, Twitter is like where I yeah. started and it's to me the place I feel most at home. Like I'm not one of those people who wants to do stories and stuff like that. I really like the tech space with the, you know, that's really where mm -hmm. I feel most at home.
because of the blogging and everything else. Yeah, and that actually lends perfectly to the last question. And uh, obviously, it's kind of interesting to look at getting hacked as a positive, right? And that really takes a mentality that, hey, you know, um, even in negative things, there's opportunities to grow. There's opportunities to get better. Uh, and that's something I, yeah. I think has helped me get through some negative times in my life, some negative uh, circumstances. It's like, hey, what, what is the positive I can take away from this that actually makes me uh, better? So I really appreciate that about you. So when you look back at your career, you look at back at you know the people who pushed you, you look at back at how you evolved. If you went back and talked to yourself in your first year of teaching, what advice would you give to yourself? I think that I was really afraid when I first started teaching. I wanted to... I, I wanted to look like I had all the answers and I was really fearful if I didn't have all the answers that I would be judged. And I really wish that I had done a better job reaching out for help and resources because I think that that would have made things easier. The more that I feel like I've connected with people, you know, and I stopped just closing my doors, the better teacher mm -hmm. I think I became. And so back when I started, that was not the culture. Um, and so, but now it is, and I really hope I, I, if I had to give myself advice, it would be that you do not have to do this all by yourself. You know, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many things, there's so many opportunities out there and it was really hard when I first started teaching. You know, so, you know I'm, um, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about how intimidating, you know, it is and, and probably a lot of people feel that. And honestly, I did not feel that at all. I wasn't nervous to ask questions. And it, and it, I'll, I'll be, it's not because of my personality. It was because in my, in my internship, I had a teacher named Mandy Osmond. And Mandy Osmond like went out of her mm -hmm. way to help me, went out of her way to like give me stuff before I even asked, right? And she made me feel so comfortable asking those questions. And then in my first job as a teacher, uh, I worked with a wonderful woman named Marlene Bertram. And Marlene, uh, basically my first day showing up there, she said, hey, here's all my stuff that I have. You have access to anything. If you need anything, please let me know. Wow. Um, but whatever you need, just let me know. And so I think that I probably would have felt very similar to you if it wasn't for those teachers early on in my career that made me feel comfortable asking questions. And so I think I share that because um, a lot of people here, you know, it, they might walk away from your story thinking, yeah, Debbie, you should have asked those questions, right? But but if we've been in this career a little while, we should be going to those people and making them feel comfortable, right? Especially if we have wisdom to share because, right. yeah, like I, 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 never even, I never even had a chance to settle in to feel that because I wasn't allowed to by those teachers. They went out of their right. way to help me right away. And that really made all the difference where it was warned. Where it was warned when I went into education, we were warned by our professors. You better hope you don't get a teacher that says, look, I've spent my whole year creating this stuff. I'm not just giving it over to you, right? And then I never had that experience. Right. I had people just saying like, here, take anything you need, right? Because ultimately they're helping kids. So um, I want, like, and I'm sure you, you know, you've had people like that in your life, maybe not in your first year, but you know, your administrators. Right? Yeah. yeah, and I think that my first, my first two schools that I were at, the administrators and the staff definitely saw yeah. had different ways of seeing things. And so, you know, sometimes when you're in mm -hmm. that kind of situation, yeah. you want to stay under the yeah. radar because you're not sure who to go to because right. of well, that environment. And hopefully, you know, as uh, people are listening and, and hearing kind of like how those people have supported you, how they made you better, um, we, we look at uh, how can we help others that are maybe newer to the career, maybe struggling. And I, yeah. I really appreciate you sharing those things because I know um, hopefully that inspires someone to help someone newer in a profession, newer to the school, because I know I've been blessed to have that. So Debbie, thank you so much uh, for being on the podcast. I look forward to uh, discussing more with you and uh, you'll see uh, anyone that's listening uh, or watching, just check out the links because you're going to see uh, a link to uh, Debbie's book. But Debbie, thank you so much for being on three questions. Thank you so much for having me. Bye everybody. Thanks Debbie.